which you've probably seen already. My name is Peter Ivanov, and I'm head of trading for Ultraplay. It's a company that's been dealing with um, esports market, gambling market for the last three, four years. So I'm uh, just going to do a short presentation on how we can actually monetize traffic through esports betting. And after a short break, then we're going to have a little QA session that obviously any questions that you guys have, we can discuss and then we move forward. I mean, I really hope that most of you have an idea of what esports stands for. So can I just quickly ask you to, I know you all had lunch and raising hand might be a difficult task, but um, just want to get an idea of how many people are familiar with what esports stands for or have an idea about esports betting in general. Okay, great. It's way more than I expected, so we're going to have some fun. As you probably know, uh, the esports betting side has been around for, I would say, probably about three years, four years now. I mean, it's accepting bets on, on esports games been around for more than 10 years, but in the last three to four years, the market has been booming, and pretty much every conference that I've attended personally, there's been a topic about esports and how this is the new phenomenon in gaming, in the gaming industry. So uh, we've reached to a point where we can actually say that it's about six billion dollar industry. Um, that's again a, a real speculation because I would say that no one wants really to tell us what their real turnover is on esports, but in general. Um, figures have been doubling year on year basis, so wherever you see a uh, hundred plus percent increase on a year to year basis, then you probably know that there's something in it. So if we start from there, um, this is really uh, a hot topic and it's been around for quite a while now and we are moving into a stage where it's actually being offered on pretty much all, all operators have an idea that they should be offering esports somewhere down their verticals, uh, but how to do it or how to actually drive some traffic and get some um, real turnover, that's the real question that's been going around and that's where I think most operators are struggling because as you're going to see the traditional approach doesn't really work. Um, again, esports um, as a product has been there for, I don't know, um, the way that we offer it has been developing for probably on a monthly basis. We've reached a point where we're actually offering more than 25 different games, different game titles where people can actually bet on. And of course, as in other sports, you would have the football, tennis, and basketball, where you would see over 90% of the turnover. So although we see a lot of games being involved in esports in general, and they're being offered or bets taken on them, it's actually three main games that drive the whole industry forward. If you look at the esports industry as a whole, not just the betting side of things, uh, you would see that there's more than 150 million people around the world who are actually involved in one way or another into esports, whether that's through playing at some form games or whether that's been through watching professional tournaments, professional games. But in general, that percentage or that number is growing, and that means that there's going to be a lot more people involved in esports in the years to come. And that's mainly because of the crowd demographics that you're going to see uh, shortly about the usual or the typical person that's playing video games or the typical person that's involved in betting on esports. 
we're talking about uh, millennials. I mean, I know that's been a huge topic for companies as to how to, how to drive millennials to casinos or how to attract them into different sort of lotteries, slots, and all, all other products that are being offered in the gaming industry. But in general, esports is one of the most successful ways to drive people, the millennials, into gaming and presenting them or trying to uh, bring them into other products that they normally wouldn't look at, no matter how you offer them or no matter how you advertise them. They're simply not into it, so there's no way that you will be able to attract them. So you'll be no surprise, as you probably know, that a lot of the Traditional sports clubs or stakeholders in, in, in different sports are entering esports through ventures or buyouts. So they're really trying hard to uh, put a stake into that developing sport as well. You would see that uh, teams like PSG, like uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, they're all entering the area and they're bringing in clubs, they're developing the same structure as they have across football, basketball, and all the other sports. So uh, it will be no surprise that we soon gonna see games like virtual games being played like Barcelona against Real Madrid. So, and it will be attracting pretty much close to the same number of people that would watch a football game as well. So um, if we're talking about numbers as well, we have a, a really young crowd that's interested in two sports that has a disposable income. Its disposable income is growing, growing by average of 20% on a yearly basis. So these people are getting more and more uh, as they develop through life because we're talking about people from 18 to 30, 32. So uh, these people, as they're growing, they're getting more and more money more and more income, so they're more entitled to be involved in um, gaming or entertainment industry. So if we look at the three main target groups that we're talking about when it comes to esports betting, we have the millennials, the ones that we've discussed already. We have the esports enthusiasts, is the people who are actually, their life is actually esports rather than the other way around. Uh, it's the type of people who spend all their free time either watching or playing games uh, and that's usually the younger generations that are coming and growing up. You would see them more and more titled as eSports enthusiasts. And then you have the occasional viewers, people who actually don't spend too much time watching eSports, but once there's a major tournament or interesting games, they tend to plug in and watch the games. In general, if you look at the enthusiasts, because these are the people who are really fond of the game, um, they spend about eight hours a day either playing or watching video games, so that's quite a lot of time that you would actually spend so they don't really have time for TVs, they don't have time for sports, they don't really have time for social life, so excuse me for that, but obviously if you spend eight hours on a PC, then you probably won't have too much time going out. So the demographics are really there. It's the type of people that you wouldn't be able to attract via traditional methods and uh, people who are not even like, uh, we had a conversation about, I don't know, two weeks ago with some professional players at a tournament and they, they shared with me that some of them don't even have a TV at home. Like, they, they don't really, they're not really interested in having one or because they, A, they don't have time for it and B, they don't even understand what they can actually get from it. So um, you wouldn't be able to attract those kind of people through traditional media. So you need to find alternative ways to attract their attention and to bring them into gaming. 
And of course, one or probably the best way to do it is to start thinking as they are and try to offer them a product that's really close to their needs and their interests. Right, eight hours a week. Um, as again, when we're talking about esports, we need to understand that we're talking about a very, this is a very vast term into that you cannot, you need to break down into different categories because there's different type of games, different, which are completely different one from another. So it's not easy to um, put them, to generalize them and just use the term esports. You need to start thinking that we're going to be specializing into different game genres like uh, you have first person shooters, you have MOBAs, you have um, simulate sports simulators like FIFA, NBA and so on. So um, the interests of those people are very vast, they're very different from one group to another so you cannot just group them, group them together and say that they're all uh, thinking in all the same way. So you need to use different methods for those different groups in order to be successful to attract them into gaming. If we talk about, if we talk a little bit about um, the current traffic sources or how actually operators are getting esports enthusiasts at the moment, you would see that um, the only way to get them at the moment is through streaming platforms like Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, another alternative way is to get it through big data providers like um, specialized websites for particular games where users go to find information about matches, players and so on. Again you have tipsters similar to sports where you would have people offering uh, a tip or how like they see the games. This is very useful for um, especially for newbies or players who are not so familiar with betting on esports, so they try to use tipsters as a form of getting information about like how how they can start betting or how they can start following esports. Reddit, another maybe Reddit is um, so-called forum of esports where all major topics are being discussed and a lot of people are involved into not only talking about uh, esports in general but very specific things and like the future of, of esports, how it's developing. So you have a lot of esports content on Reddit as well. And of course you have the gameplay analysis platforms where a lot of people go to try to enhance their game and to uh, find better ways to play a particular game. So these are like the five different main channels that we're currently seeing in esports traffic. Of course that's really, really small compared to all the traffic channels that you'd see in, in traditional sports. And that's a huge potential. There's a huge potential especially here to see in like a new new forms or new ways to attract esports crowd into gaming because these are only one type of like channels. They're not like focusing really too much on on the on the players themselves, uh, but they're rather trying to uh, get traffic from already established channels as they are here. Again, the promotional tools being used to attract people at the moment, as in, in traditional sports, you will have special bonuses. There's millions of them. Whether they're working or not working, that's another debate. Again, you have virtual items, or the so-called skins, where actually people are getting some form of incentive to join or to enter the sites in order to get something that would uh, help them improve their game. And the latest 
innovation, if so-called, that we are seeing is that a lot of incentives of people sending to different places around the world where esports tournaments are being played, people are being sent there for free in order to, like, winning raffles and different kind of competitions, just to make them aware of the esports gaming industry. So we're seeing a lot of these tools being used. Um, they are quite successful in some ca in most cases. However, they are very limited as to it as compared to what we see in sports. So there's a lot of a lot of place for improvement, both in traffic sources and promotional tools being used in esports. And that's mainly because it's a, a relatively young industry, and uh, a lot of a lot of the sources are not being used to its to their full potential. Here you probably are familiar with all those companies. Twitch is um, the biggest probably streaming platform in the world. Um, that's the the foundation of esports is based on Twitch and its uh, core product. It's uh, it's been a company that was sold for 200 million two or three years ago, and probably now is five or six times the value of that. Um, again, the other ones, the big ones like YouTube and Facebook, were not the forefront in the beginning, but they're quickly catching up and they're trying to establish themselves as a medium through connecting people to the esports world. And you would see a lot of deals coming from both YouTube and Facebook with major tournament organizers who are trying to push to have exclusive rights to show games just to make it that they get the attention of of that crowd. Here again, you would see that um, obviously, just to get an idea, um, one of the biggest events that we most watched on Twitch last year was the finals of League of Legends. It attracted about 50 million viewer hours. It generated quite a low income at 5.5 million from ticket revenues, but you have to bear in mind that unlike sports, in esports, it's uh, not common people to pay, so pay-per-view or such deals or for premium um, premium channels are not so well integrated and people are still refusing to accept or adopt the idea that they actually need to pay, and that's generally coming from the conception that a um, few years ago uh, it was free and it was quite normal people to watch someone play a video game and there was no real commercial interest into that although there are people out there who are attracting on a general on a daily basis viewers of more than a hundred thousand people a day so they have a huge commercial potential in terms of how they can convert those people into gaming. Again, these are the main traffic sources that we will be seeing. Then if we move into another area that uh, we've been looking into gaming for the last few years, and that's uh, desktop betting against mobile, you probably all we share the same idea that mobile is taking over desktop and we're seeing about 80% of the bets coming in through mobile these days. Uh, it's to no surprise then with eSports, that percentage is going even higher. People, I mean, just coming from the conception that eSports uh, demographics are young people who are really tech savvy, they are uh, they can use, they use both all their devices to their full potential. So you we would see a lot more mobile betting in, in e-sports than in traditional sports, just because the demographics are really into it. I mean, there's no young people here that would probably live more than a few days without a phone, I guess. And that works the same way. And in terms of 
um, desktop. The only real advantages when it comes to esports is that because it's so being um, watched or streamed live, um, there's certain advantages as to how people can uh, actually watch it or the whole uh, process being on a desktop or on a computer would be much easier to comprehend or to understand rather than on a phone. Uh, I don't know how many of you have watched an esports game, but it really, on a phone, if you try to watch it, as I do, it's really hard to understand what's going on. And so you really need a bigger screen to get an idea what's actually happening. So that's the only disadvantage they'll have on mobiles, is that people don't seem to understand. I mean, I've, I've watched a football game on, a, on a, my phone, and I can completely understand the whole uh, situation. While if you try to do that on a, on a first-person shooter, you would probably go blind after five minutes, just staring at the whole thing, trying to understand what's happening. But, as I said, there always people are always carrying their phone, they're using free to use apps, so it's all free, then no one's into premium apps or premium pay-per-view uh, applications. So we, we have to understand that it's the premium concept that we have in sports, that we developed into sports, is not ready to be implemented in esports yet. However, as we are seeing a lot of traditional uh, or a lot of companies involved in traditional sports moving into esports, I'm sure that we'll be seeing a lot of that concept being implemented and uh, down the road somewhere we would see people start accepting that they will have to pay for premium content that they're viewing. Uh, in general, if we have to sort of wrap it up before we, we go later on into the QA session, um, eSports has been developing really well for the last few years and it's uh, no longer something for the future, it's actually happening now. It's overtaking rugby, golf, it's becoming probably the fifth or sixth sport in terms of turnover betting turnover, so uh, it's something that we have to look at very seriously if we haven't done it yet, and it will be only growing from here on for two reasons. First of all, because of demographics, because of the people who are involved in it, because as they're growing and the new generations are getting even more involved in T-Sports, and on the other hand, it's because the offerings or the whole product is only getting bigger and bigger because we're getting new games involved in eSports pretty much on a monthly basis while we haven't seen a new sport being invented for quite a while so um, that area is only going to grow from here on in. Right. And I think that will be it for, for the presentation side. I don't know if we're going to take a short break or we're going to move straight to QA. Okay. Okay. All right, so we can do the QA straight away. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer. Yeah, go on. In terms of esports at the moment, you have the so-called golden trio. You have a Counter-Strike, which is a first-person shooter. You have Dota 2 and League of Legends, who are both uh, MOBA, or the so-called multiplayer online battle arena games. They're seeing about 80% of total turnover at the moment. Out of the 25 that we, we are currently offering, that's quite a lot. Anyone else? Um, that's a very good question because when we're talking about esports, uh, that's definitely Asia. But we have to bear in mind that we have a huge difference in terms of game popularities or game title popularities because we have.
some games that are really popular in Asia, for example, and have almost to no interest in Europe. Likewise, there's, there's some games like Counter-Strike, for example, which are hugely popular in Europe and in North America, and then in Asia, there's, there's no scene for them. So, um, again, esports is a very broad term, and we can't really say where it's the most popular. But Asia, in general, is, is the birthplace of esports, anyway. Um, in Europe, you would see the Nordics, the Nordics area being one of the, like where esports are really popular. And lately, the CS region, especially Russia, is moving hugely, and we see a lot of numbers growing in in the Russian region or CS region, as we call it. FIFA is an interesting topic because FIFA has been around for 20 years or so. Um, it has the potential to be the biggest by far. It's the most selling game in the world. However, through I, I hope there's no one here from, e -sport, from EA Sports. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that, but I've said that before. The concept of esports or the professional side of FIFA is not developed up to a point where it would attract the interest of the casual people that are actually playing FIFA. Because there's a lot of crossover between football fans and FIFA fans. I mean, a lot of the people that are involved in, in football play FIFA in their spare time. However, making them or attracting them to esports or to the professional side of, of the game, it's, it's not there yet in terms of FIFA. However, if I can just transfer that to uh, another game, which is the NBA. Uh, we've just recently started covering um, the so-called NBA tournament, or it's uh, something that's been developed by the, uh, the people who are behind the NBA league. They've done just an eSports league with the NBA, with the real teams, and it's been hugely successful. It's been there for just a few months now. It's growing steadily, and I believe we're going to see a lot more in the NBA region very soon. Anyone else? Yeah, go on. It's, it's, it's not a rumor. It's there, as you said it. It's there like in tennis. It's there like in football. It's like every other sport. And that's coming because there's the opportunity for it once the gambling, the, the gambling, the gaming industry has started to offer a lot of like bets or a lot of offerings on, on esports. And the second side of thing is that price pools or the amount of money that the, the players are getting are actually way low compared to the turnover of betting companies on esports. And that's one of uh, uh, huge incentives for players to try and fix games in terms to get more money out of betting rather than playing the game and winning the whole tournament. So I think we've just like jumped a few steps ahead in terms that um, Gaming companies are a bit greedy and they start offering huge, uh, they're taking huge bets on esports when the whole industry is not ready for that. And you're just giving an incentive to players to start thinking about how they can actually get something out of it instead of growing with it as it goes. But as you said, it, it's there, it's there across all sports, so esports is not an exception. Anyone else? No one? All right, guys, thank you very much. I hope you've learned a little bit more about esports and how it can actually be monetized. So I really hope you enjoyed it.